If your SaaS business is growing 300% year over year, you should probably raise prices monthly. So one of the things that I notice with a lot of the founders and teams that I work with that are running high growth SaaS businesses that grow from two to three to 500% year over year is that they actually are often willing to raise prices, but very rarely are they willing to raise prices in a cadence every month. And there's a psychology element in this where I see that a lot of the founders think, well, we just raised prices. So if we raise them again, three months later, what's our customers going to think? And my response to that always is, well, it's all new customers, right? If you're growing 300% year over year, that means that January 1st, you have a hundred customers on December 31st, a year later, you're going to have 400 customers. So three quarters of those are going to be all new customers. So if you raise prices in January, you can do so again in July, and it's going to be mostly new faces. And if you do that again in July compared to next July, it's going to be mostly new faces. So there is this factor in high growth SaaS businesses is that you're always working with a new customer base that does not have the cumulative history of the price raises you've done in the past. Some of them will, your legacy customers will. There are different ways you can work with this. You can do grandfathering, you can raise their prices uh, not every time. You can do what we call pricing cohorts. We can get in, into that on another occasion. But just for now, realize that it's mostly new faces. You have been here in your business for three, four, five years, and you have the entire history in there and you have all the pain of the mistakes you've made, where maybe you botched the price raise, you've got all the customer success backlash and so forth, but your new customers are not. If you have product market fit and you're growing at a rapid tick, it's going to be mostly new faces. Just raise prices for them if you think your product can carry it. If the value is there, raise the prices. And really think about it this way, if you have product market fit and you really are growing three, four, five hundred percent a year, likely what's going to happen also is that the product that you have January 1st is going to be completely revamped by December 31st. A year later, you're actually selling a new product to those same customers because it's a living organism, the product. It isn't the same product that you're selling year over year. So a price change, raise up and down, repackaging, whatever it is, is actually warranted. This is the nature of the compounding SaaS business is that you get to have a relationship around a problem and a solution with a group of customers. And as that group grows, you get to organize it differently also from a commercial perspective. Look at this in this way that you're actually burdened by your history on price ranges, but your customers are not. Your customers are willing to pay general value of the solution that they're getting. And your job is to figure out exactly how to bring more value, of course, but also what that value is and charge it accordingly. Now, if you do so, you can actually take a 300% growth rate and turn it into a 500% growth rate. And that's really where most people miss out is that they're saying, well, we're doing okay. 300% is great. Don't rock the boat. We're going to raise the Series B in six months. Let's not touch it. But in reality, they're missing out because of fear, because they don't want the confrontation with the customer. Instead, they should just say, okay, so even if we grandfather everyone we have, if we grow 300% year over year, the next 75% batch of customers that we're going to get in, three quarters of the customers we have in a year's time are going to be new. We, we haven't contacted them yet. They're in our pipeline. They can get higher prices. We don't have to rock the boat with the existing customers. We just do them in tranches, just constantly layer old customers into old pricing tiers and just move forward with new pricing. And in that way, we get most of the effect on the pricing because of all the new customers that come in. So depending on how willing you are to run risks, how much risk you need to run in order to raise your next round or hit your targets, you actually can build that into the way that you raise prices. You can run more or less risk. You can grandfather customers. You can roll them over into the new pricing. That's up to you. But you need to realize that there are ways for you to raise prices without pissing anyone off. And the only reason you're doing it is because if you're afraid, I don't know why you won't do it. So it's really weird. I actually don't know why you wouldn't do it. You have a product, it's worth a hundred. You're only charged 10. Raise the prices, just do it and do it again. And if your excuse is you don't know how, well, you can figure that out. You figure out how to work the product, how to work the sales, how to work everything else in your business. 
pricing really has this leverage on everything else that you do. So if your only blocking is, I don't know how to do it. If you look deep and hard into your own eyes, you'll find a way just like you did with everything else. It's just, I'm here to tell you that it will work. It can work. It doesn't need to be risky and it has a huge upside. And if you think about it, you can actually really like that too. I hope if you have comments on a new raise prices successfully or you botched it totally, maybe you raised it several times, let me know and like and subscribe. I'm here for you. All right, cheers.